Hello, and welcome to Backbone Screencast number two, Mixins. I'm Nick Gauthier, and today we're going to look at different ways to reuse functionality across different Backbone objects. There are a number of ways to do this, and we're going to look at a simple example, and then a more powerful example using CoffeeScript. The simplest way to reuse some functionality is to use underscores extend method. Extend will copy all of the properties in the source object over to the destination object. This will allow us to define a bunch of a bunch of functions or properties on a source mixin and then copy it over to our destination. So let's check this out. So I've got my empty application.coffee source file. What we're going to do is add in a backbone object and we'll just call it widget. It'll be a model. And then we're going to define our own mixin here. Um, We'll just call it hello mixin for now, and this is simply going to be an object with a hello function, and it's just going to return hey there. So now we'll use underscores extend to say extend the widget prototype with hello mixin. So this is going to put the hello mixin onto the instance methods through the prototype. So that means that down here in my on ready, I'm going to say w is a new widget and I'm gonna grab a handle to my output div on our page and I'm gonna say output HTML well text w dot hello let's check it out so there we go we've got hey there coming through our mixin works pretty well okay so let's assume that we've got some data coming back from our back end using Rails's standard timestamps. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with them, that's fine. It's really just uh, a time format coming through from the back end. Once we've got that timestamp coming through, in Backbone we're going to want to parse that out into a JavaScript date object so we can use it nice and cleanly from the model. So let's take a look at how this might work. We're going to have our new person and this will be initialized with some backend data and for now let's just say created at and then we'll put in here's a uh, timestamp coming from the backend now what we'd really like to do is say output.txt and then we're gonna put the persons created at and then we'll call javascripts time to string now if you're really doing this in a real app you'd probably want to have this be in a view and format this string really nicely but for now we're just going to show the process of it transferring through a JavaScript time object and then coming back out. So what we need to implement is this created at method that will turn this into a JavaScript date object and then we'll be able to talk, call toString on it. So our person is going to be a backbone model and created at is simply going to be a function that returns a new date based on parsing what we get from our created at field. Let's check it out. Alright, so here's a nice, well, kind of nice formatted string. Note that it's not the same as what we gave uh, JavaScript in the beginning because it's going to parse it back out and format it with toString. Now let's extract this out into a mixin. We're going to make a timestamps mixin and this is where we're going to move our created at. So now what we can do is just as we did before say underscore dot extend person dot prototype timestamps but uh, we want to make this a bit more flexible. So first of all, we're going to add in updated at as well. And now our code's getting a bit redundant. So what we'd really like to do is turn this date parsing into a class method. So on timestamps, I'm going to make an instance key and put these under it. And then I'm going to create a class key. And here I'll put a method called timeParse and what that's going to do is take a time as a string and parse the date object. There we go. 
Now up here we can simply call timestamps.class.timeParse and unfortunately JavaScript doesn't really have a very good uh, class method system so we're gonna have to call it directly on the object but that's alright because we'll always have this reference and we'll do the same thing down here so now what we need to do is actually extend person with these two methods and the class method so we're already extending the prototype but now we need to say instance for the class we're just gonna take out prototype and replace it with class now let's make this a little bit easier to use since this is gonna be our pattern everywhere let's make another method we'll call it mixin this is gonna be our own function that takes a source and a destination and it's then gonna call these two methods on it so we've got our source and we've got our destination now down here what we can do is say mix in person timestamps so this is looking pretty good so far and note that even though we had to say timestamps.class.timeparse here this class method is still going to get mixed into person so we could say person dot time parse. But let's make this even better. CoffeeScript has a really neat feature which is that while you're extending a class you're actually in the scope of the object that you're defining. So what I mean by that is if I were to call say mixin here on this, the this in this case, this at sign, is actually going to be person. So that means if I say mixin timestamps and then I put this mixin method on the backbone model inside my function here this will be person which means I can get rid of source and replace it with this so this is really cool because I think it simplifies it a lot and it means that you don't have to make this extra mixin declaration after the person declaration so near the end of the file you can put it up near the top and this reminds me a lot of Rails style concerns where you've got instance and class methods wrapped up in a mixin and then you can include them nicely into person. If we wanted to we could uh, even add a little method down here called included and then up here during the mixin we could say um, let's see we'll say destination dot included dot apply to this so that would call included in the scope of the person so we could take some extra functionality right when it's included but we're not going to do that right now let's check it out and see if it works great it works just as we planned so I hope you enjoyed Backbone screencast number two on mixins, and if you'd like to see more patterns like these, check out my new book, Mobile Web Patterns with Backbone JS. Thanks.